Hey everyone, Bronco37 here, doing another video on the uh, 1973 Honda CB750. Uh, what I have here is the carb rack, and I've uh, been kind of working on it, got into some problems. There's, uh, there's this part right here, which controls the uh, throttle, so this, you know, all these different parts fit on this shaft here, and I'll show you how all this stuff goes together when it's all done, but... You know these parts fit onto that shaft and then as you turn the throttle cables it moves these up and down which lifts these different plungers on the uh, carburetors themselves to control the fuel well we ended up we had a uh, a broken screw inside of this one and uh, it's amazing what it takes to get this stupid thing apart so we're just gonna we're just gonna make a new one of these parts so we we got this all cut out there's a there's a tiny little hole right here that there's a screw, a grub screw that goes inside there and locks the shaft in place. And you can't really see it here, but uh, uh, Dino over at Hack a Week did a great video on this. But you can see if I slide this out, there's this groove uh, right here, which uh, is supposed to keep all this stuff in line. Which really, it did, that's that's more for manufacturing as far as I'm concerned, because once everything is together. It's all, it's all really held in place by, you know, this and uh, this part here and these different pieces here. We'll really keep that thing from sliding back and forth this type of direction. So, but we got it all apart anyway, and so we're going to go ahead and make a new one of these. And there's some other things that are wrong with these carburetors that I'll explain to you now. Um, we found this was one of the float seats or uh, the, 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 the float valve itself, the needle. And um, this is not off of a Honda CB750. There should be a little spring-loaded end right here. And when I rebuild these, I'll show you kind of what they yeah. did. The guy that I bought the bike from told me that these carbs were rebuilt. He went ahead and rebuilt them. So I started checking them and found out that the floats and stuff were wrong. Well, what happened, I determined with this bike, is at some point in its life, this motorcycle caught on fire. And I'll tell you why it caught on fire. Um, you can see this float right here. I don't know if you can see down inside there very well, but the float never contacts the needle itself, okay? Because they have this float height set so incorrectly. And I mean, it's like 3 eighths of an inch off. This float, when it's adjusted, should be you know, somewhere in this range here. And what happened was, at some point, somebody got to tinkering around with these floats because they were leaking gas. So what they did was, they took this gasket on the bowl, and they siliconed that to try to keep that seam there where the bowl goes on there from leaking. Well, that didn't change the fact that the float valve itself could not close because of the drastically incorrect setting on this float. So what happened was, the bowls filled with gas, and inside the bowl, there's this spout right here, and this is an overflow. And when too much gas gets in here, it'll fill up and it'll go in this, and it'll run out this tube right here, which there's usually, there's a rubber line on each one of these that gather all together and they go down underneath the bike. And uh, so when they siliconed this seal shut, which you should not do, uh, that gas had nowhere else to go, so it just filled up and it went in this tube and down the overflow tubes underneath the motorcycle. Well, they saw gas dripping out of those tubes, so they went ahead and they siliconed those shut too. Well, you haven't corrected the problem. That gas is still gonna fill up in there and it has to go somewhere. So the gas continued to fill up. It could not fill up in these tubes and those overfilled. And then the gas actually backed up inside the throat of the carburetor here and eventually pooled up inside of the air box on the bike. And when the gas pulled up inside of the air box on the bike, at some point uh, that caught a spark. Not really sure how. It could have been the uh, infamous shoddy Honda wiring that they're known for. Um, but it ended up catching on fire, which melted the air box a little bit and uh, the side covers on the bike. So in, in digging into these things to you know kind of see what kind of condition they were, we solved the mystery of uh, why the motorcycle caught on fire at some point. So... Um, when I got into that, I'm a big fan of using the original parts 
but in this case there's just too many questions and there's missing parts and there's a bad float and all kinds of stuff so i just ordered an entire rebuild kit and we're going to rebuild all of these carbs and get them all back to spec and bolted back onto the rack but before we can do that we need to get this little tiny part remanufactured so i've already got that on the machine and i'll show you what we're doing with it so here we are over at the lathe and uh, I'm just going to make this part here out of aluminum instead of this, I don't know if this is pop metal or aluminum or what it is, but we're going to go ahead and make one out of aluminum. So I've already got the, uh, the major diameter of it here turned down so it's the same size. And uh, here's what it's going to look like. So we've got a micrometer here, I'll move that out of the way. So this is just a little sketch that I made and uh, 2564, so we're going to double drill that. So what that means is we're gonna drill a smaller hole, maybe a 64th of an inch or so under that size. And, uh, and then we'll go through with the 2564 drill. I've already got this diameter here turned. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. And the part is about 3 eighths of an inch long. And then in order to replace where that screw was, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill and tap this for a quarter of 20. Originally, obviously it's a Honda that was a metric hole there, but uh, I don't have a whole lot of metric taps and drills and dies and all that kind of stuff here in uh, our shop so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna make it a quarter 20 and it's gonna screw down all the same and it'll work just fine so we got this part turned here and so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the hole drilled in it next Okay, so this is the first drill. This is a uh, 3 8 drill. And it's a 64th of an inch under, uh, smaller than the uh, finished diameter that we're gonna have. And I've already got my, uh, my tail stock set. And so we're gonna go ahead and drill this out to our depth. Just like that. Now we'll go in with the finished size drill. Now we've got the finished drill diameter in here, which is 2564. So now the whole reason that we're gonna double drill it is because I don't have a reamer. And so double drilling it's gonna do two things. One, it's uh, it's gonna hold that hole a little bit better on location so it's actually concentric and centered with this diameter, which really doesn't mean a whole lot. I'm just a machinist by trade, so I'm a little bit picky. So I want my components to be uh, nice. And it's also going to maintain a more accurate diameter and give us a better finish. So, you know, drilling a little bit smaller because I don't have a reamer of the size that we need uh, that will make this drill act a little bit more like a reamer. When you drill a hole, that hole, that drilled hole is always gonna end up a couple thousandths of an inch larger than the drill diameter. Um, so by pre-drilling it and then going in with this is going to give us a little bit more uh, accurately sized hole. So let's go ahead and get that drilled. You can see it's taking out just a very small amount of material. Only about a 64th of an inch here. As soon as we hit the bottom, we know we'll be done. There we go. And we can go ahead and back that out. And now we have our hole is all accurately sized in there. Okay, so now what we have is, uh, this is our high speed steel parting blade set up. And you can see, I've already started cutting this part off. And uh, I parted it into it just a little bit. And that gave me time to be able to, while the part is rotating on the machine, get in here with a file and quickly dress this edge and dress this edge so that there's no sharp edges on there. And then this is just the center drill grabbing the Jacobs chuck so that when I part this all the way off, this will catch it and that way I don't have to hold a pencil in there, let this thing fall on the floor or whatever, because uh, I'm kind of holding the camera while I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and part this all the way off. You guys will see how that works. When I get to that inside diameter of the hole, then the part that I want to keep will separate from the remaining material left in the chuck, and you can hear it change. There it goes. It's going to break right off. 
and there we go nice and safe nobody's fingers in the way and then we have our our part here so that's the start of it so you can see this is what we have now and um, we need to uh, drill and tap a hole in here oh there it is this is the this is the original and there's the new one so you can see the difference here we need to uh, we need to drill and tap our hole in here which I'll do over on the milling machine and then there's these little flats milled on here I'm not sure that those are really important they don't seem to interfere with anything but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mill those on there anyway so there's one that goes up here and there's one that goes 180 degrees from it so when I drill and tap my hole while I still have that orientation I'll mill that flat and then when that's done I can flip it over set that flat on top of the parallel and I can mill the other side. But like I said, I don't think that those flats are important, but hey, let's go ahead and put them on there anyway. Okay, so here we are over at the milling machine and uh, we've got our part already in the mill and I measured those flats and it appears to be of only about 30 thousandths on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those here and we're just gonna uh, do kind of a touch and go. So we'll fire this up, get our RPM set a little bit more appropriately. side. Okay, so now we have both of our flats milled on there and then now all we got to do is get to the center of this and then drill and tap for a quarter 20 set screw to go through there is what I'm going to use. There we go, threads are all cut. So there we go, there's, uh, there's the old one, here's the new one. When I measured the flats, I just, I made it just like that one there. So you can see that when I set those on top of each other, same, okay? So we've got our uh, flats on there that I don't believe actually do anything, but hey, the originals had it on there. Drilled and tapped hole, and then that should, uh, we should all fit onto this shaft like this. So that's the beauty of having a machining background when you're working on stuff like this and, you know, facility like this to use. It's really handy, you know. So when, when something's not right, you just cut it off of there and you measure it up and you manufacture a new one. So there's that part. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll start putting this thing together. And as we continue working on these carburetors, I will uh, post more videos about exactly how we do that. So thanks for watching.